we use data science to understand how hate groups organize online? Data science is the process of cleaning, storing, and organizing data so that we can use computer models and statistics to understand problems and pose solutions, ask questions. Some of the questions that I'm most interested in in this space have to do with online radicalization, online propaganda and hatred and how it flows through social media, and the makeup of groups and hate groups that use these systems. One of the earliest questions that I asked in this space was about group membership crossover. I wondered, if you join a hate group online, do you just kind of stay with that, or do you ever dabble? Do you ever change ideologies? To answer this question, I started looking at an event you might be familiar with, the Unite the Right event in Charlottesville, Virginia, back in 2017. So this event was organized on Facebook, which at the time made it very easy to collect data about. So what I did was write some software that asked Facebook for all of the people who had RSVP'd going or maybe to this event. And then I wrote some more software to construct a list of 2,000 hate groups that were actively using Facebook at that time to organize. And then I asked Facebook for the membership rosters for all of those groups as well. I threw everything into a database and then constructed a social network based on the shared memberships across all of those groups. This is a picture of what that social network looks like, some of the ideologies that were involved in those hate groups on Facebook. Each circle on the diagram is a group. The groups are, uh, the, the circles are larger, rather, if, the, um, if they have more members in the group. And they're connected with a line if the groups share members in common. Groups are drawn towards the center of the diagram the more other groups they share with. And the ones out on the fringe, out on the periphery, are kind of not sharing with very many other groups at all. So my question to you is, can you tell, just from this diagram, or can you guess, where the Unite the Right event might be? If you guess the center, you are exactly correct. It was one of the most centrally located, one of the most um, ideologically diverse and pulling together other groups in the entire Facebook hate ecosystem at this time. In fact, if we hover over the circle, we sort of blow it up, this is called an ego graph, we can see just which other kinds of groups this event was pulling from. It's basically every other ideology we had there, and in good numbers. This is a photograph my husband took in Charlottesville that day on the ground. And data, uh, photographs are data as well. One of the things I really love about this picture is that you can see the same four ideologies that I just showed you in the network graph, but here they are live and in person. And they're represented by the flags the men are carrying and the outfits that they're wearing. This event truly did catalyze multiple ideologies and multiple groups to come together for one day. Another question that I asked about um, online hate is how the groups themselves are organized. I was curious about leadership and membership, and if we could use data science to expose some of those facts. Um, I turned to a different social network, though, to answer these questions. I looked at a network called Venmo. This is a payment network where people pay one another for services. You can see in this screenshot that uh, two members are paying one another for monthly dues. This is um, a hate group that's using Venmo quite regularly. Good news for me is all of the data on Venmo is publicly available. So it's easy, once again, to collect and make a nice data set. I wrote a computer program to collect 200 different hate group members that were using this platform to pay their monthly dues to an organization, and then constructed another network to see if I could discern the leaders of the groups automatically. This is a picture of that network. And in this case, each circle is a member of the hate group. And this time, they're connected with lines if they paid a transaction to one another. So they paid each other for dues or t-shirts or stuff like that. The more transactions they had, the larger the circle. And then I colorized them red if my computer model indicated that those people might be good candidates for being leaders. The question I had, though, was how do I tell if my model was right? How do I know if those actually were the leaders? So as it turns out, this particular hate group has bylaws, and they put these bylaws online. And they blacked out the names of the national leaders in the document. But unfortunately for them, they did a poor job of this, so anyone could just hover over with their mouse and reveal the names of the eight national leaders there. 
Yeah, so I, of course, did that. And now I have a list of the eight leaders, right, nationwide, and then I have my predicted leaders, so I can now compare and see if my model was correct. And right off the bat, we see that four of the leaders that I predicted were in the bylaws document, so that's pretty interesting. Another three of the leaders that I predicted were not in the national organization as leaders, but they did end up being cell leaders, individual um, cells. Another two of the members um, that I predicted to be leaders, I was unable to confirm because they used a fake name on Venmo, so I don't know who they are. And then my model got one totally wrong. Um, I never would have predicted that this person down at the bottom here would have been a nationwide leader, and yet he was one of those named. What we learned from this is that we can use just the data that these guys exposed on social media to reconstruct a leadership map and a hierarchy of the membership within this group to some effect. The last example I'm going to share with you today is about tracking online propaganda and hate as it flows through social media. I be became interested in this um, last year after the Christchurch massacre in New Zealand when the killer created a manifesto of his beliefs and posted it online and then live streamed his killings. Social media companies were frantic. They were trying to remove this content from the internet. And I wrote a technical article about why that was difficult to do. And my editor at the time asked me, hey, do you have one of those lines and boxes diagrams? And I said, oh man, that's a great idea, but I, I don't have one. Um, so I thought about it for a long time, and what would that even look like? About six months later, um, unfortunately, another killer was inspired by the first one. This time it was in Germany. And he uh, also live-streamed his killings and released a manifesto online. That morning, I dashed together a diagram. It looks like this. And I put it up on, um, on Twitter. And just really quick, I'm not super happy with how it looks at all, but I was trying to convey how two copies of the video, or two versions of the video, had moved through a social um, media platform called Telegram through their channels. I don't like this diagram, and I can think about a hundred things wrong with it or things that I'd fix about it. And about two weeks later, I was given another chance. Thankfully, not another killing, but this time it was an online harassment campaign, a hate campaign. And so what I'm going to show you next is sort of a work in progress of how um, I'm attempting to diagram how this hate campaign and how that harassment flowed through social media. It started on a Facebook page where someone had put up a post that was directing hate at a particular individual, targeting them for harassment. The post was picked up by a handful of other similar Facebook pages. Each of these had about 2,000 likes, so kind of a slow start. But one of the pages, one of those posts, caught the attention of another Facebook administrator. And this one had a much larger audience, about 500,000 followers. He changed the headline a little bit, added some more hateful special sauce, and reposted the harassment campaign. And this time, phase two of the campaign looked something like this. It really um, started to catch fire. Some of those large circles that you see in the center of the diagram, those are pages with a million, two million, one of them had two and a half million followers. So this campaign really started to take off at this point, and the hate was very intense. The campaign eventually died down. There was a third phase to it, but it didn't really catch, catch much attention. And my question at this point was, how did this happen? What was the catalyst? What was the fuel that made people direct so much hate and so much um, harassment at this target? How did this work? So I ran the numbers on the reactions that people had to the Facebook post. I collected the data. And then I did some math, and I figured out that over 80%, upwards of 85, sometimes 90% of the reactions that people had that they were targeting at this person were the angry emoji. They were just so mad. There's a lot of things that I don't like about this diagram, too. I'm not entirely done with it. I'm not super pleased. One thing that I haven't been able to convey at all, I just don't know how to do it yet, is how to show the harassment campaign moving into other platforms. So this campaign moved onto Twitter and it moved on to Telegram. I don't know how to add all of that to this, to this picture. It also moved into the real world, to the person's email and to their phone. How do I visualize all those messages and calls? How do I visualize threats to the person's home and to their workplace? What does that look like on a picture? I just don't know. 
I've worked on it for a really long time, but I must tell you, this is not my favorite diagram to work on at all, because in case you didn't guess by now, the target of that campaign was me. So not, my, not a lot of love lost between me and this diagram, but I'm still working on it. It's okay, though. It's one of those lemons and lemonade things where um, being the target of an online harassment campaign like that is just one more opportunity to use data science to understand online hate and how it works so that one day we'll finally know enough that we'll be able to come up with a solution and fix it. Thank you.